a few comments about that. Oh, shit. I got one in the car. Did, did I say we're on the park? We're on the Indian Exclusion? I don't even think I said that. Oh, okay. 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 Because. Well, we haven't had a show about that. That's your sexuality. I want to get to blah, blah, Yes, yes, yes. A lot of people want to have that conversation. I didn't know that was the last but then I was outside of Washington. But I was right. I wanted to go. I didn't know it was like I didn't know it was like that. I didn't know it I mean, the, yeah, you know, the way. I'm I'm old, old, as I'm driving home, like, I'm like, ah, she was going to try to find a way to include. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, yeah, like, come on. Greetings and welcome to Rock Newman After Dark. Tonight, we're going to talk uh, about the movie Queen and Slim. And I want to say from the outset <clears throat> that if you have not seen the movie, maybe you ain't black enough. Uh, Don't go there. Uh, oh, really? Uh, uh, because we are going to, uh, we're going to talk about the movie, we're going to give away the plot, because we're going to examine all aspects of the movie. So if you haven't seen it and you want to see it, and you're one of those kind of people that don't want to know what is happening until you see it, turn us off. Don't, don't, don't watch us right now. Everybody else, Tune in. <laughs> so, I want to introduce uh, first my good God Almighty, esteemed group of guests. I'm going to start in the corner over here with Jade. Let me get this right. Let me get this right. Jade Arendelle, yes. anti racism trainer and activist. Absolutely. All right. To her, on her side over here is Dr. Cleo Manango. Monago. 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 And uh, Dr. Monago is a Facebook friend of mine. And he's rather prolific in his writing and his assessment of social issues, especially, whatever they, they may be. He is always thought provoking and, and provocative. And so I'm very happy to have him as guest today as we discuss Queen and Slim. In the corner over here is my brother from another mother, Kimon Freeman. Kimon is a, a one of the foremost activists in Washington, D.C. He co-founded We Act Radio. He has led many uh, protests and continues to do outstanding work in the district. Um, on his side is Dr. Julianne Malveaux. Um, uh, uh, she got her Ph.D. in economics from uh, uh, MIT. And uh, someone once asked her, said, well, you know, when are you going, you got your PhD from MIT, when are you going to tone it down? We'll let her <laughs> t say what she told the people that said that. Uh, back here <laughs> is our sister, Hillary Younger, and she is a interior architect and a social Architect. Someone said, "Well, what does that mean?" We're gonna we're gonna let her describe that. And on my other side here is my dear brother, uh, Dr. Ray uh, Wimbush, uh, professor at Morgan State University. Uh, he's a prolific thinker and he's an outstanding uh, thinker, strategist, and an author. And just finished with this book here, mm -hmm. the Osiris uh, Papers. Reflections on the Life and Writings of Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. Oh my God, Thank what you. would she say Ooh. about about Queen and Slim? So, you know, there was this there was this prologue written, and I've talked enough already. I'm not going to read what it says here. Let's just jump into uh, the movie, Queen and and Slim. Um, you know, I think, Dr. Malvo, you saw it on a Sunday recently. Mm -hmm. Your reflections, please. Love it, well, hate it, or otherwise? Mixed feelings. Loved um, a lot of it. I think it was uh, black people fantasy mm -hmm. um, in terms of, you know, being able to face the cops down, flee that long. I mean, that just frankly, doesn't happen very often. I resisted the notion that they were the black Bonnie and Clyde, because Bonnie and Clyde were criminals. That's These right. people were not criminals. Mm -hmm. and that, So that's a, that's very, there's a lot of very easy, lazy thinking going into yeah. some of this analysis, and that kind of really bothers me. Uh, what else bothered me was the reinforcement of stereotypes 
um, you know, the black, the sister who was almost um, wearing her armor, um, and the brother who tried to get in there, and you know that that is the stereotype is that sisters are inaccessible, cold, um, and the, the brothers are trying. That's not necessarily the case. It was interesting. Um, I love the cin cinematography. I love the sort of fleeing scenes. Although I just saw that as fantasy, utterly as fantasy. But sometimes we need fantasies. Uh, so, I mean, that's what was reaffirming to me is that we needed fantasies. I sat there, I went by myself. A friend was supposed to go with me. He got a flat tire, I left him. Um, <laughs> but in any case, um, I sat there and I was totally immersed with the whole thing. And at the same time, my critical brain was saying, who did this? Uh, what is this about? What kind of trope is it pushing? Um, even the, um, I mean, white policemen are brutal, but the beginning, I just didn't see that really quite happening. It does happen, but I didn't see it really quite happen. So it was a plot trick, mm -hmm. if you will, to get us into the story. Uh, the, the other thing uh, is there, there were just so many, it was replete with stereotypes, but also <coughs> replete, which I think uh, we often see with the diversity of the black experience. Yes. So you had a sister who's a lawyer, some sisters who were hoes, uh, and a lot of stuff in between. Mm -hmm. You had the black policeman who gave them a break. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you had the hustler who sold them out. Yeah. You know, so the diversity of the black experience. Mm -hmm. I just find it to be something that's a great jump off for conversations. Uh -huh. um, and I do think that um, one of the things that we have to come to grips with is the frailty of the notion of a black community. Let me stop you right there. Bill, <coughs> you uh, certainly in what I saw in a little bit of your writing and a little bit of the conversation, you would be uh, characterized more as a detractor of the movie. Why so? Well, <coughs> excuse me. Is that fair? And if so, why so? Well, let's see if it's fair. I think it's important to say the obvious that might not be obvious, because you mentioned the word lazy a moment ago, is that this film is fiction. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's important to state that is because of the laziness that Dr. Malvo referenced um, in terms of our willingness to critically analyze what we see. As you may know, black people, according to somebody's statistics, are disproportionately the biggest moviegoers and media utilizers mm -hmm. in this country, which is unfortunate for us because most of it is poison and most of it is anti-black and very, very few of the items out there educate us. And frankly, this movie was another one of those movies that did not educate us. Um, the I, I, if I could ask, if I could sure, jump in. Sure, absolutely. Did you feel it was anti-black? Yes, it had, it had definite anti-blackness, anti-blackishness, if you will, in it, absolutely. How, Cleo? Because yeah. I well, didn't think it was anti-black. I did think it was lazy. I think there were trifling, trifling aspects to it. I didn't think it was anti-black, but I did not think it was black affirming either. Okay, well, I'm going to make, make my point. Um, again, the context is we live in a society as black people that does not encourage us as a norm to look at things through a black critical analysis. We just mm -hmm. watch it, we eat eating popcorn, we're being traumatized, turned against each other, made anti-black and passing the butter. There's, <laughs> we're not really looking at it for what it is, which is simply fi fiction. We get emotionally involved in what we see and what we experience. Um, the, for example, the, the, the son, there was a son in this film whose father was ran over accidentally by Queen and Slim. Mm -hmm. And the father was calling his son the N-word re relentlessly and referring to the son's mother as a hoe and a bitch. Mm -hmm. And if he you wasn't, he said he wasn't talking about his mom. <laughs> he was talking about. I ain't talking about. He your was calling. Right he right. was calling what, we, what was presumed to be black women bitches and hoes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And if you don't have a critical analysis and you use it as kind of normalized, traumatic, anti-black talk, the movie perpetuates it. Mm -hmm. It co-signs it mm -hmm. because there was nothing educational about that moment. Okay, yeah. if I could stop you, sure. Because I want to bring Ray Wim and Wimbush in. Ray. Um, you seem to enjoy the movie and, and, and strongly support the movie. Well, I do because I think it's a black love story. You know, it's almost like we're getting to a point that the only legitimate films for black folk to look at are documentaries. Uh, I heard some criticism when Harriet came out a few uh, weeks ago, actually a couple months ago. Uh, black folks said, well, it wasn't true to history. Well, I don't just want 
to look at documentaries about black folk. I think we should, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I come to some film just for entertainment. I think the other thing is that we missed a lot of symbolism in Queen and Slim. Such as? Such as. Uh, at the end of the movie, I'm giving away the whole thing. Yeah, do it. I, I, we gave him a warning. But at the end of the movie, when uh, she says that, you know, you, I'm your legacy, and mm -hmm. then he, she gets killed. Yeah. And then when he carries her, mm -hmm. he, she, you know, he gets shot, of course. Yeah. He does not let her body fall on the ground. Yeah. He, he lets, she falls on him. He, uh, she protects him. He protects her, rather. I think the symbolism of you know having dialogue without lips moving, mm -hmm. uh, the the scene where the uh, they get on the white horse. I yeah. mean, why is it a white horse? Yeah. I think there was a lot of mm -hmm. symbolism there. So I don't, you know, I'm you know I'm not trying to say that everybody that goes to a movie should analyze the system of white supremacy, but I think that I saw that film as a black love story. I think the other thing that I resonated to it, I was raised about five blocks literally from where the uh, film was shot on 69th Street in Cleveland, Ohio. And I know exactly where that place is. Mm -hmm. And cops are that bad in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that, you know, that it was just, a, for me, a love story. You know, uh, Ray, you say, you say love story, and I'll interject here. Um, when black people saw them and knew who they were and what they had done. The majority of the black people protected them, protected them and, and, and showed them love. And I'm jumping way ahead from the front. I was going to go in, chronolo in, in, sort of, uh, chronolo in a chronological order of the sequences of the movie, but I'm going to jump way ahead. And when they were in that juke joint, mm. <laughs> yeah. You know, I looked at that, and to me, it was unmistakable that that there were black folks in charge of this, mm -hmm. writing this story and putting it on the screen. And my thought was, damn, this is a black ass movie. Mm -hmm. no, that was just, no, no, that was just my feeling. That Jade, was a sweet scene. Yeah, that was well, really Jade, a sweet I, I, scene. I, I, I want to go to you. Because Ray just gave an eloquent interpretation of why he liked it and why he supported it. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're, you're highly critical. I'm critical. Um, thank you for having me. Sure. Um, I'm critical because I know that all art is propaganda, right? And so propaganda and art is either going to be used to empower us or disempower us overall. My critique about the film is that when folks and myself walked out of that film, I did not feel empowered as a as a black African person. There were beautiful moments within the film. Um, I did not like the way that um, Queen and Slim's death and black death mm -hmm. is romanticized repeatedly in the media. How you know our trauma is romanticized oftentimes within these stories and commodified absolutely, and people are capitalizing off of it. Their entire industries, even like within the social justice world, you know, around black trauma, people are benefiting from I that. I call it black tragedy porn. Black tragedy mm -hmm. porn. Ooh, and speaking yeah. of porn, I, I want to answer your question first um, about that scene. The bar scene was beautiful. I can relate to that. I've been in space. Actually, every space that I walk into, I intend for it to be a safe haven, mm -hmm. like what Queen and Slim felt within mm -hmm. that juke joint, mm -hmm. but I know that um, that what that that sentiment was not portrayed throughout the film, mm -hmm. and it's also not realistic within society. But along the lines of porn, when you say not realistic within society, do you mean that folks on the run who make and the people who are in like a joint like that, mm -hmm. who know they're on the run, mm -hmm. that it's not realistic that they would kind of love them and protect them? I think um, when we are intentional about the relationships that we're building, when yeah. we're intentional about our own consciousness and who are, we're surrounding ourselves with, that yeah. can be reality. But unfortunately for the masses of our people, yeah. it, it, it isn't reality. Yeah. Um, but I also do know that a white man initially wrote this story. Mm -hmm. And that's, 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 the filmmaker and, and, and the director, 
they they put a lot, you know, they, they brought it to light and they gave us something beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and I also know that the person that was originally written for that was supposed to be the sellout at the end was written in as a fat white man. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. so I'm interested about the choice that is mm -hmm. made mm -hmm. to have, um, you know, the brother from Florida to do that. So yeah. I have a lot of about the okay. Kim, go hold on, hold on. Kim, I'm going to come to you, but uh, Hillary, I, I want to get you in this. So I know you had a reaction to what your girl Jade was saying. I did. There's been a lot said in from you know different perspectives, and I, I respect what everyone is saying, but I think that to say that artist propaganda, okay, that's very broad and ambiguous. But what I do think is this movie, for me as a black person, represented the chaos that is being black. Like, I get it. it there were highs, there were lows, there were triggers, there were great moments, there were plateaus, there, were, there was confusion, there was all kinds of things. And as a black woman in this country, I felt all of that, especially a woman from the South. I also believe, as a creator, that art, like Nina Simone said, should reflect the times. And I saw so many mirrors in this movie. And to be honest, Queen, for me, was one of the first times I ever really saw someone in a movie that I could fully and wholly relate to. I mean, aesthetically, and in many ways. Mm -hmm. There were things in the movie like cinematography, for instance. You were talking about watching films purely for entertainment or not learning. I thought the film was very educational. As a woman who is from Dallas, Texas, from the South, origins deep from the deep South, mm -hmm. every movie I've ever watched about the South was about slavery and plantations and those types of things. Watching that film and how the South was depicted through pictures was amazing for me. I learned a lot. I mean, as you said, you know, you go sometimes to be entertained. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you receive many messages. There's mm -hmm. all kinds of symbolism. You can't watch it on the surface. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ignorant surface mm -hmm. thinking. I mean, we don't want to be triggered. Yeah. Um, it's just a lot of punk ass okay. stuff going on. Keep on. No, 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 no. I gotta get you on it. I gotta get you on it. Okay. Okay. Keep on. Ten, 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 ten. This is where I got the dog, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. I got the dog. So <laughs> I just want to say that. Yes, uh, it is true that the story genesis began with uh, a, a white man that approached the writer leaning um, uh, with the idea of this film. The idea he had was black couple get in the car, approached by police, they shoot the cop, and they're on the run. That was the genesis of this, of, of this story. That's all he had. But she wrote this film, and it was shot um, with Final Cut. They had... Um, control over this project. So I want to make sure that it's very clear that Toni Morrison dedicated her life to eradicating that white gaze. Mm -hmm. There was no white gaze mm -hmm. in this production. So I want to mm -hmm. make sure that that is... You know what, man? And, 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 and I'll tell you what. And, and I think all of you are deeper thinkers than what I am. But I did keep thinking this is a black-ass film. And these two, this, this writer and this director... It was like their, their footprints were all over it, and I didn't think Charlie's footprints or fingerprints were well, on it. Except for the fact, Rock, that when you have a black sellout at the end, that's white folks telling their trope about us. Of course, right. they're having that, black sellouts. That's right. Okay. But that was that's, that's a reality. That, 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 that is a reality but, but, in our existence but, also. But, 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 the other thing that really jarred me, I mean, I basically like the film, there was a lot to enjoy, but there was also a lot to criticize. But the thing that um, probably disgusted me the most, I would use disgust is not a strong word, was a juxtaposition between a sex scene and the violence. I, okay? I, okay? I, I, I have truly, that written down. I yes, want to talk about that. That, that truly just yes. was jarring because it suggests um, with enslavement at its roots that our love is a violent love that somehow we don't love unless we're forced to love. And it reminds me of the breeding of black women. Although this was not what that scene was about, but this was not, it, it, it just really, truly jarred me. And as I said, by and large, I enjoyed aspects of the film, but that part there, um, I cussed in the movie. Right. See, one, uh, uh, one, uh, uh, one of the things that occurs on shows is that people are, are, are invited because of their resume, because they, they've been speakers, they've done something that makes them seem like they should be on the radio or on, on a TV show. Mm -hmm. And m everyday people don't necessarily have the lens. Like you, for example, are an educated critical thinker who writes <laughs> about Dr. Francis Lecrae's Wells. Hallelujah. <laughs> Did nobody walk in the, in the, the, the nobody walked into the- You know what, because, because, I, be, because I intentionally 
look for this oh. to be a black ass show. <laughs> let's, get Ray, let's get Ray Winslet a hand for look, writing this book. When the show, is, the show is black and has black asses. That, this is true. <laughs> but the point I want to make is that my perspective, for I went to see the film in Baltimore, and I watched the audience and walked out with the audience and hung out in the lobby with the audience to see what was going on. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were very demoralized mm -hmm. by this film. Mm -hmm. And the film was demoralizing to, to black people from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. It was dehumanizing of black people. And there was, in my opinion, a white gaze, whether it was conscious or unconscious, a white gaze concerned with the white saviors that, was, mm -hmm. that, I, that were in the film. In this society, the white savior trope is detrimental to black people because it implies, I'm giving, okay, I'm going to tell you, because it implies that we really can't do nothing without them. In contrast to the fact that it was a black man who set them up to be murdered. Yeah. And I won't call him a black man, but go ahead. Well, he well, we we can call him what he want, what we want to, but we'll see that we'll see that we'll see that's a that's a white gay terminology. The N word is theirs. That's a whole nother that's a whole nother thing. And it was all through this movie. And I'm telling you, even even when the the baby shot, well, he's a baby to me. The young man shot the police, the brother in the face. Yeah, yeah. That was complete fiction because that has not happened in no, at any at, at, at any one of our um, protests. Yeah. But the way they set up that that led him away from another piece of science fiction, which was the brother who was his father or his elder, who knew who they were and had issues with them, mm -hmm. and was left alone to take his child for his child to take them somewhere. That wasn't realistic. It, 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 usually, people call call. That's who gonna call on you. Okay. Who don't trust? So it was a lot of stuff that was like, and, and, and my perspective also is, is that if, if I'm a black child watching this, I'm not a critical thinker watching this. I'm a black child watching the way the father who got hit by the car was being treated by his, by he, how he treated his son, uh -huh. calling black women hoes, uh -huh. and how the relationship that they had, but particularly from the sister's perspective, was apprehensive initially, and how there's a need to make black men docile. Mm -hmm. In this society, mm -hmm. and all these agendas that were not that are not helpful to black people, <laughs> right? Were all through this film. Well, see, <laughs> you know, see, I I hear what you're saying. I think though that I saw it in Baltimore because I lived there, and the folk left. The, the biggest criticism I've heard of the film: why they got to die at the end. Mm -hmm. So the question I have is this. What if they had gotten on the airplane and escaped to Cuba? We would have mm. said, oh, that's unrealistic. When has black folk escaped to Cuba? Well, Asada did it. Asada, that's what I was going to say. And there have been others. Except for Asada Shakur, but a black couple. Yeah, exactly. And so I think that we don't like to see black pain on the screen. But the all. black pain is in context. It happened at the end of two and a half hours of trauma and drama. Was and it then it, and then it ends know? like this. Okay. I, I never so, use the word "all." Oh, I saw the, the the thing in the club and how and, and how the sister of the bar the has their drama and trauma. It, it, that's it, what that's right. That's right. right. But it's trauma right. and drama right. in the movies. If if I, if I made the film, there would have been a lesson. There would have been something in that film to carry away that was transformative it, and eye opening for black people. people. And there was nothing so I, 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 I want to bring something specific at this point. It's been talked about. This is not an original idea. But you have a very dark-skinned brother and a very dark-skinned sister. And beautiful, too. Both beautiful. Mm -hmm. Who engage in a very humane kind of way. It a, was a slow-developing love story. And I've scratched my ball head to try to find sometime in the past where you had two black, dark-skinned principals who, were, who, at the end of the day, created an understanding amongst themselves and loved each other. And you all say what about that? Well, I think it was beautiful. I, the, the sister was fine. The brother was good-looking. But again, I will go back to my original point. This, excuse my language, shit was fantasy. 
Um, and, and we have to really deal with the fact that it was fantasy. I mean, it's beautiful to see two black people fall in love, mm-hmm. two dark black people fall in love, so you're not looking at the skin color crap that so many of us have to deal with. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were both lovely, they were both smart, They're, they were not equally yoked in terms of class, but they managed to overcome that. I think that that was a nice piece, and I think that there were lots of things about black men, black women, and relationships <coughs> That was nice. But I think you have to put this in the backdrop, not only of fantasy, but also of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. And when we look at it in the context of white supremacy, what we're looking at is white people's vision of what black people are. Mm -hmm. So we all sit around using the N-word all the time. Well, some of us do, but many of us do not. Many of us have woke up enough to say we don't use that (laughs) word. Not only that, but in terms of uh, what was Uncle Earl, the pimp, with the half- they can wipe. I loved Uncle Earl. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, but, you know, he was part of the story. And, I mean, all of this was part of the story. And, the as, as you said, white boy wrote it. Sister made it come didn't to life. Didn't write it. Didn't write it. Just, just, just the had, idea. Just have the concept. The nugget. Had the sister have it come to life. And your point, it's entertainment. It was not edutainment. It was entertainment. And so, basically, mm-hmm. that means that all of our hopes and dreams are pimped, if you will, for profit. Uncle Earl was a pimp. You said you loved Uncle Earl. So let me tell you why I loved Uncle Earl. Let me tell you why I loved the character <laughs> of Queen. Mm-hmm. So you have this girl. She was a lawyer. We talked about her wearing armor initially. Mm-hmm. But what we realized about this girl is that she came from a different place. We talked about class. She clearly was first generation. She was an attorney. She had separated herself from her family to yeah. a certain extent. Yeah. But when she went back, mm-hmm. she went back to Uncle Earl, mm-hmm. who was in many ways the plight of her pain mm-hmm. and ask him for help yeah. and uncle earl was willing yeah uncle earl was willing and uncle earl also had the resources and as a person who is from south dallas texas i keep saying that y'all look it up need to know where that is i know what south dallas is. Do, it for me it was an important character because people will see me now yeah. and assume one thing but i have an uncle earl um, i know some hoes well, I'm an uncle and earl the reality too. is when i go back to the south dallas what I know. the people the people who i am who I interact with now, my peers, people mm-hmm. who are lateral to me now, mm-hmm. for me, mm-hmm. are not my resources. Mm-hmm. All my social media, the people who I educate, the, the audience that I reach, the people I'm able to inform are those people back home mm-hmm. who want to connect to a different pro- component of society mm-hmm. but don't have access. Mm-hmm. And so I saw her as a liaison to a certain extent. And to show where she came from and why she probably had that barrier up was very important. Mm-hmm. There was people say that there was no lesson there, but I think like you said, the surface thinking is the thing that's like keeping people from actually acknowledging the reality of how powerful Jay, that what's your, was. what's your response to that, Jay? I like Uncle Earl because Uncle Earl was on code and he was willing to help his niece. Um, I like Uncle Earl uh, because I can empathize with like his experience also mm-hmm. um, being traumatized as a veteran. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not a veteran, but mm-hmm. I, I can see that and I can, it, 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 he touched my heart. Mm-hmm. And I really like the way that he showed up for her mm-hmm. uh, and the way that he was humanized. Um, there's just so many things happening <laughs> within the film though. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're staying on, uh, staying on uh, Uncle Earl. Earl. And, and so no, but, and, and I, here's what I want to ask the, the, the table. So one of Uncle Earl's hoes, right? The one in the pink, with the big fro, the right. tall one. I had no clue. Was a transgender person. Or was it was it, was a transgender person until a week after I first saw it, and I went back and 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 looked. There doesn't seem to have been a lot of conversation about that. I don't I think have, she was I have portraying to say. A, a transgender person in this film. No, it was one reality. of his. Uh, yeah. I have things to yeah. say about that. Huh? I didn't. I have things to say about the, the okay. transgender person in the film. I did not know that it was a transgender person also until like a week after the film was made. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and to me, the most poignant dialogue came from that character, right? Which was, um, you know. In here, we make him feel like a king because out in the world, he isn't anything. Now, when I found out that it was a transgender person who said that, yeah. I felt slighted personally as a black woman because I know that there's so many of us sisters who do stand up and, and love on black men in that particular way, but then in our in media and in life get criticized uh-huh. for upholding our black men within our heterosexual relationships. Uh-huh. I just So I, I thought that was really, really interesting. Yeah. Um, 
But, I mean, I love that dialogue. Yeah. I love the conversation about it. But then actually knowing that it was a trans person, the second time I saw the film, it yeah. definitely had me interact with that character differently. Like the brother said here, that they were trans was not really relevant. Yeah. It was another woman, if you will, mm -hmm. in the house. What bothers me, going back to my concern around black children and young people and people without a critical analysis watching this, is that Urkel Earl was later contextualized as someone with PS PTSD. Mm -hmm. But he was abusive, mm -hmm. he was hitting, hitting these women, and he was supposedly better, now he's a king at home, but to be, it reminds me of the show Power. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and Power, you, you have power because you're a good drug dealer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what that show's about. It's about drug dealers. And it's, a, and it's about a man who won't even touch his wife, mm -hmm. though he's supposed to have one that's black and it's all messed up and crazy. And I don't like the black children are probably sitting in front of that show as well. But the bottom line is that these messages, without a full educational, extremely obvious educational framework, are just dangerous and negative to, to black self -conscious. And there is a question that I, I think problem. is a fair question is, can a movie ever do that? Yeah. Can yeah. a movie ever do no, that? No, I don't know. No, I think that critique is going to be, yes. you know, entertainment is But it's not, exactly but it's not the movie. It's, it's, it's not the movie's responsibility. It's, our, it's black, yes. parents, it's black yes. parents' responsibility yes. Yes. To, to, to tell their children, look, you live in this society, right. you're good, you're a wonderful human being, don't let this white supremacy get to you, but be, yeah, be able to decode yeah. and, and know the, be able to decode white supremacy and know when you see it. They're, they're the problem, not you. Mm -hmm. See, if black children mm -hmm. have that message as a young child, mm -hmm. you're not going with the issue mm -hmm. and don't do the N-word either. Yeah. It's them with the issue, then we would be much better off as a people. But it's the lazy thing that you said earlier, <clears throat> that I think is important to, to sit because it's so true. Okay. People you know, don't walk into the see. movie with all this analysis. They walk into eating popcorn and get emotion involved in the story. We cannot if they're see not the responsibility of us if they educate are. our Many children of us are. or educate our people by talking about what a movie means. Because this is an interesting intellectual conversation. But at the end of the day, somebody who thoughtlessly goes into this movie because they think it's entertainment and then has a series of messages to take away, you know, you're, we're, here's what we're doing. We're slicing pieces of it. Like the conversation, I, I'm, I'm a little puzzled, I want to hear from you, mm -hmm. about the notion that you were disturbed about the trans woman saying, you know, we got to love him. Uh, because that's where many black men are. And that's why many black women accept abuse. Because mm -hmm. we believe that in the greater society, everybody is down on black men, so we have to lift it up. Mm -hmm. um, and I may be, you know, this is a little shorthand, mm -hmm. but I've, I've had friends who have been beaten, mm -hmm. and they won't call the police because they're like, the police are down on black men anyway, yeah. so why would I throw the brother Let to the Let Jade police? respond to that, Julia. Well, I'm, I'm trying to, I was still listening, trying to, to see what, what, the, the, what you're puzzled by specifically with that comment. I think that... Um, I want to see more heterosexual black women um, empowering black men on screen and in real life well, trans, the way that that person did. I mean, I'm not, I'm not. Trans women are heterosexual from their perspective. Well, not from well, my it, perspective. Well, it depends on the person. Yeah, but it's not I mean, from it's my a African lot of perspective. Nuances. There aren't. So that's probably what thing. it is. And I'm clear. Like, I have my own conscious bias. You know, I am a human being. I, I make judgments and meanings. And that was, that was something that as a, as a black woman who is really a stand for black men and does feel, you know, is supportive of all black people and works with black people from all walks of life, genders, sexualities, and all of that. Um, you know, my African, my African, my Afrocentricity definitely kicked in, like, the second time I saw that film, knowing that it was a trans person because I felt like that was such a, it was a, a really important piece of dialogue that I identified with, and I wonder what impact that could have had on black love and black heterosexual relationships had it come from a, 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 um, a cisgender well, okay, person. Well, well it okay. might have been a stronger Ooh. statement if it had come from a cis person, but at the same time, <laughs> trans people are African people too. Absolutely. And one of our challenges is that so many of us are so judgmental in our silos that we're not willing or prepared to talk about black people who have different sexual mm -hmm. orientations, who are trans or not trans. I mean, this is where we have a total limitation mm -hmm. in our ability to come together as African people. Okay, well, stop. Stop there. Yeah. Stop there. Stop there. We're going to take a, we're gonna take a okay. switch out break. Wait. Did you just say something? So, we, we, uh, we, we switch seats a little bit and we end up with an interior 
an inter- I'm an interior designer, an, an interior, interior designer, architect, and, and, a, an in, and a social architect. And a social who architect. Uh huh. Phrase was coins. And in the three esteemed PhDs. So I need the four of you and the two <laughs> of you behind me now to help me with something. When I was explaining to a colleague how I felt when I left the movie, I paused and tried to gather my feelings, gather my thoughts. What I felt most when I walked out of the theater in Georgetown, and I walked amongst, at that moment, what was 90% white folks. I felt a sense of rage. (laughs) So my friend said, why? I said, once again, we the innocent get slaughtered and murdered by them the guilty. They the guilty don't get held accountable. And we get slaughtered for their entertainment. And I am, and, 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 and I feel a certain rage about that. And so he paused and then said, and you know why you're really so pissed off? I said, well, you tell me. He said, because there's really nothing you can do about it. Mm-hmm. Can y'all respond to that? Can, can well, what bothered me about that situation is that, again, Black people become heroes, mm. and they become immortalized and dead. Mm. And then they become, you can't do much dead. And then you, they become martyrs, or there's, mm-hmm. there's statues and stuff made about them. Instead of creating a context that prevents the murder and the killing of black people so they won't become dead. And we almost glorify in the film, in my opinion, did it it's by default, glorify that, that behavior among us where we are almost accepting, you're going to die. You're going to get killed. So let's, let's take care of your, your image and, and your importance after you die and put up a, put up a what do you call them things? Poster, yeah. uh, that's, that's just powerless and, and, and well, impotent to me. I think but, but you talked about having rage and nothing you can do about it. I don't, I don't think that's true. I think there's a lot that we can do. Oh, yeah. But these demoralizing films that create the same thing that happened to Malcolm, the same thing that happened to MLK, where they became uh, ghosts, and which ghosts have no power. It creates a container for powerlessness that Seriously. becomes normalized among us. Therefore, we don't do nothing but have rage and flex. There's nothing we can do. Because that's not iconic. true. There's a lot that we can do. They're yeah. iconic ghosts, which means that we lift them up in uh, distorted ways. Right. So then when people start writing or talking about, as an example, Martin Luther King's flaws. We have totally, we have so dehumanized him that we think he's supposed to walk on water. We can't accept it. He was a man. Mm -hmm. But one one of the things that bothered me most at the end, so they had the policeman's body cam, which means they saw the whole thing. In other words, they saw him attack. They saw the brothers shoot in self-defense. But what we saw on the screen was just the, they shot. They didn't see the whole context. Well, that was real. We never had the concept of the whole context. Mm -hmm. So it was easy to demonize them and to set up this juxtaposition of the bad guys and the good guys. And I left the film, I saw it on 8th and V, the right by Howard, Atlantic Plumbing. Um, That's what I saw, yeah. The the crowd was mixed. Mm -hmm. My attitude was major. Um, (laughs) When the white girl who was sitting in the middle of the aisle tried to walk past me and ran into me, I put my foot out. (laughs) <laughs> I couldn't help it. Dr. Malvo. <laughs> you know, no, girlfriend didn't say, excuse me, she said, no, I'm like, my I girlfriend. But in any case, you know, I, I was angry for so many reasons. And one of the reasons that I was angry is because, again, of the notion that we can't do anything about this. And we saw That's people in the streets protesting. And so many of our protests are futile. Uh, we saw them call the names of uh, Ray said Cleveland. Uh, isn't that where Tamir Rice was? Yes. 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 So, right there. You know, yeah. we, we've seen so much of this. So somehow, although this was fantasy, replete with lazy thinking, what I'd like to see is a Rocky-type film where black folks basically 
take their, excuse my language, shit back. Yang go, on change. Yang go on change. Yang go on change. Right? Well, no. Well, that was about to say. Wait, 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 wait. I got you. Since you bring up the jingle, let me say this real quick. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, well, let's give our let's give our perspective. Let me make it clear. Not escape. Okay, since you brought up jingle, I'm glad you did. Sugar, somebody. What was his name? Sugar, Sugar Land. Sugar, Sugar, Land. Sugar, Sugar Land was the man oh. who was the, the 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 murderer and disfigured who had black men being eaten by dogs. The DiCaprio, right? Yeah, uh, but he was not killed by the Django. He was killed by the German. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's and that's that's the white boy making the narrative. And the, the brother who got who, who Django killed Sam Jackson, not. The, not the, not the well, I, well, not your truth. No, but the wait, well, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I don't mean to provoke y'all, but I tend to do that. It's not on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 this stuff makes a difference in our mind. It, it affects how we think in our children. Mm -hmm. And if the movie was made in a way that was affirming of black people, Django would have killed Caprio, yep. and mm. and Samuel would have had a transformation, as opposed to just being fodder to be murdered by the Django. And when and when and when the Jago killed Sugar's um, was his sister, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Beca it, it, it became yeah. slapstick. Blow, blow my But it became yeah, right, slapstick. Right, right. Remember when she yeah. fell back? Yeah, yeah, wait, yeah. That yeah. was so we would not take it seriously that he was killing a white woman. Hmm. So you gotta you gotta understand how how how, how the mind the works. And I'm gonna close with this. There was only one person that the Django showed other than his wife show demonstrative love to in that film, though it was lots of black men who were being slaughtered in that film. Guess who that was? The German. Because at the time, he kissed, he, he literally blew a kiss to the German. Now y'all go rewatch yeah. it, no. and y'all okay. see, no. 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 see the, 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 the mind I F get back that to was done. Slim. Right. But yeah. Queen and Slim did the same thing. But it it did I the same it, thing, particularly those white saviors in the middle of the film. But, but it seems like we're criticizing Queen and Slim for being a fantasy. It's, I wonder if the opposite of Queen and Slim is Tyler Perry. Because we are you saying Queen no. on purpose? No, but I, mean, that's I, mean, I didn't expect but you to go there, Doctor. I think Queen and Slim is doing what it was supposed to us having That's this right. conversation. Uh -huh. I've had I've well, talked about fault. this film more than any film and I hear black folk. Mm -hmm. I'll yeah. get my hair redone in the shop the other day and the sisters just clean and slim, clean That's right. Yeah. We don't we don't talk about Tyler Perry that and then when we do have a fantasy, I heard a lot of criticisms about Django. Yeah. When it came out. So, a lot of people say, Oh, it's fantasy. I, black folk couldn't go through the rest like this. I heard criticism of 12 Years a Slave, yeah. and that film was taken almost directly from the, from the book. Yeah. I mean, That's I'm talking about verbatim. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, so what can, you know, but we don't hear criticism of Tyler Fair Perry because I think nobody dies, we feel good at the and end. And we act like a bunch and of jackasses. And, 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 and Kimon had, Kimon had yeah, 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 let the brother talk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> first and foremost, man, more black people talk about Queen and Slim than talk about impeachment hearings. Okay, <laughs> like, that's <laughs> real. Okay, Wait, that's real. Not that in my says, world, bro. That, that, says, <laughs> that says something. And to the charge that this is trauma porn, I can see how that could be um, um uh, Was that your issue. term, trauma porn? No. It was, it was black tragedy porn. Uh, that black, okay. I, I didn't even but say see, that. Black tragedy porn. Yeah. 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 But the thing is, I I, porn. I I watch porn. Okay, <laughs> so okay. Yeah, but okay. you're not supposed to see it. TMI, TMI. I can't find a woman. I might enjoy. It. I might please myself watching that. But that's a different okay. context. So this, I'm just this, saying, this is after dark. Our, you, this is rock after dark. This is way after dark. Can we be our wholesales? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Martin Luther King has some chicks on the side. He like a few hoes. He's about to get killed. Oh you goodness. know what I'm saying? Uh -oh. He had, you know, he smoked cigarettes and had a little drink too much. You know, Malcolm was. was, was Knee deep in some holes and all kinds of stuff. Can we be uh, tell the whole stories? What I'm saying, because you know, there was, there was, when the guy got hit by a truck and was saying all, all, those, all those negative things. Okay, those people exist. And people they laugh at that part, in the movie theater, and that was a problem. Okay, well that's what that's on them. But they that, they have to tell the whole story. Well, and I think sometimes when we see ourselves reflected like that, we they have. 
we 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 say, oh, well, the brother shouldn't do that, or the brother that does do that say, damn, I sound like but that. Just like, well, it's it's but crazy. just like you take an N word out of your vocabulary, you need to take the B word out of your vocabulary too. The H you need word. to take the whole and the word whole out of your vocabulary too. No, seriously. But all the people need to be represented. But this okay. is the thing. Well, well, see, that's you not, can, one that's you can not, call somebody that, sexually her, promiscuous without calling her a hoe. I mean, you call somebody trifle without calling her a bitch. I have no problem with the whole story being told. But here's the but lesson. the context is missing from but the whole story. The lesson. You said there was no lesson that it was demoralized. I think that the biggest lesson is when that brother is sitting there counting his money oh. that everybody hated him for that. And everyone walked away saying that money looked so cheap. And then now we're not the materialistic. We do anything for money, people, because we said, "Oh, I would have." No one I know would have done with the brother. In Baltimore, I heard people say figures. I heard people say figures. Well, that just shows you. Hey, I want to put I want to put everybody on the spot. The non-monolithic perspective of black people. And if you don't, if you don't feel comfortable answering this question, I I understand. The question is this. We were sitting there holding our breath when Queen and Slim got stopped. And once we saw his face and heard him talk and felt his swagger, we were scared that something serious and tragic was going to happen. Yeah. Something serious and tragic did happen. Mm -hmm. The white police officer got Killed. He started. Well, I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start with you, Hallie, that Hillary. Hillary, how did you feel when he got seen him get murdered? Has seen him get killed, not murdered. Seen him get killed. So the truth about that moment is that for me, I've lived that. I've actually lived that. I've been in the car with a two-month-old infant, my law school husband, and myself. My husband from a different walk of life than I am. And where I got out of the car and I said, why were we stopped? We were in a Volkswagen Beetle Ooh, so this with no real, tent real for you. and a small baby in the back seat. And they yeah. said, well, people have been robbing houses in this neighborhood. We were looking for a place to stay. Yeah. And I'm like, so we've been robbing houses in a Beetle with a two-month-old baby? Yeah. Like, I literally saw myself in that film. So when yeah. that cop got shot, yeah. based on the trajectory and the history and where we are right now in this moment, yeah. I celebrated. Okay. I was happy That's his ass answer. got That's shot. Your, uh, Ray. I did too. The, the first person I thought about was how they saved each other's life. Mm -hmm. Queen helped Slim in that situation, and Slim helped Queen in that situation. I also thought about Sandra Bland mm -hmm. and I, when, when she was shot in the leg and how they were trying to protect each other. And, um, and see, I, I felt like you did. I was glad when the cop got killed. Hello. And frankly, and I know this goes ahead, but I didn't have any problem with that black cop being killed by that young black uh, brother either. And the reason why is because that cop was dressed up like a cop in riot gear. And we don't know what he would have done once he got that. And I think that she again did that in the film for us to discuss it and talk about good cops or bad cops. And the lack of self-awareness with children, though. That was what I got out of that. I'll talk about two, both the cops, and I'll try to be brief. Um, I have been in that position, too. I have been the, the black man who was harassed, actually, on the ground, and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, too. And and also, they were very good actors. It was, one, it was one of the best things in the film in terms of its the delivery of the whole thing, in terms of the actors. And, of course, the white cop was not to be liked. He was racist and crazy and abusive. And when he got killed, I, was, I had no issue with that. I was quite pleased with that. But I did not know that it was going to, I did not know it was going to morph into everything else it morphed into, but I'm going to talk about that brother who, who got shot in the face. Why different from you mm -hmm. is that the brother who got shot in the face was being caring to that young boy. We don't know that. No, 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 well, he no, appeared to be. I'm telling you from my perspective. Yeah. From my perspective, he was caring about him, he was engaging him, he was talking to him, he wasn't treating him like the white cop treated the, the people in the, in the, in the, in the right. early scene, he was being like, what are you doing out here? You know, are you all right? What's going on? And then he shot him in the face. That's not a good message for people who are, who are going in there, quote, being lazy in terms of your, your terminology, watching these films without a critical analysis. I think that was a lesson is that, you know, innocent people get hurt because there's a, there's a blue wall of salad that, you know, he knows of bad cops. You know, he was lifting his shield to show I'm not that. So he lifted his shield up humanize himself to try to separate himself from everyone else 
every good cop knows a bad cop, mm -hmm. but most of the time they don't say nothing, exactly. and they and because of that silence, they are seen and can they're quite complicit. suffer the yeah, same yeah, thing. And I think that good cops need to stand up and and help eradicate that. You know, there's a 2006. I gotta say this. Mm -hmm. oh, no, no, there's a 2006 it. FBI report, not the We Act Radio report, not the Rock Newman report. Right. The FBI says that uh, law enforcement has been infiltrated by white supremacists. Right. Yeah. And they're called ghost dogs. Mm -hmm. And nothing has been done about it. Not two black attorney generals, not a black president has ever even said anything about it. Mom's the word. And that's a 2006. And this is what we're dealing with. And, and I'd like to see this. That this so, and you know, here's what I want to ask. Okay. Jay, as someone critical. Rock, I got to jump in here. Huh? I got to jump in here. Okay. To Jay first, though. Huh? Okay. But as, I do as, have someone, to jump in as someone critical. Of the movie. Yes, sir. You got two beautiful people in the front seat of a car. In a in a in a in a in a, in a steamy love scene. And it's flashing to the kid shooting the cop in the face. Yeah, I hated that. Mm -hmm. cool. You know, thoughts went through my head, agony, ecstasy. Our, our, our great love for each other and the great, the horrific tragedies that we've experienced. What was your feeling when that was going on? And what is your thought after the fact when you've had a chance to examine it? Talk to me about that scene and how it made you feel. That scene to me was a manifestation of dysfunction um, on the part of the, the filmmakers, screenwriters. Um, and their their dysfunction. Yeah. Their dysfunction, and I also think it showed lack of dysfunction, which also contributed to a disempowered narrative that perpetuates anti-black racism how, within the but government. How did, how did dysfunction. So let me let me get let me let me get into it. The Queen and Slim making love, beautiful thing. If I was going to run and I didn't know if I was going to get caught, I'd have probably done the same thing. The placing of it with the protest with this young man who wanted to martyr himself he wanted to make a statement to say that he wanted to live forever and to his young impressionable, impressionable mind yeah. he wanted to go out yeah. and kill a cop or do something so people would remember him um at the same time like the black cop who was trying to actually help him going back that was a very very dangerous scene to have a young person mm -hmm. a young black boy shoot a black police officer or a police officer because he wanted to make a statement. Especially because now the narrative, it feeds into a white supremacist okay. narrative that we're living out in our everyday lives is that when we protest, when we rise up, when we push back against, against the system of racism and white supremacy, um, we are black identity extremists. And this gives mm. teachers and everyone else more subconscious ammunition to criminalize our children in schools. I I, I, he wasn't parents. educated at home. Oh, yeah, His daddy My was turn. a catalyst. Yeah. My, yeah. Turn. Yeah, 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 yeah. My turn. My turn. Julian. Julian. I'm sorry. I hate to be loud, but that's Ooh. how I roll. Uh, okay, a couple of things. Um, first of all, I, I do think the scene of the young boy shooting a policeman was dangerous for any number of reasons. I don't want, I would not want to have a black child sitting next to me with that going down. But when you ask how uh, one feel, felt about the initial scene where uh, Slim ended up shooting the police officer, yeah. I have to take you for a minute back down memory lane. Okay. Because I want to talk about how black people have been traumatized by white supremacy. Mm -hmm. 1986, I took my mama to uh, Biloxi, Mississippi. Okay. She went to some school. Uh, the nuns were charged with taking care of the Negroes and the Indians. So she went to the school for the Negroes and the Indians back in the day. And this was 86, I, we stopped in New Orleans, of course I'm crazy and my mama is saying, Julian, you can't do, T, Julian, you can't do this. We driving, I get stopped. I am deliberately at the speed limit, not above, not below, got stopped. So you know, of course I asked him, what you stopping me for? Mm -hmm. And he told me he didn't like my tone. I said, whatever, I need to know what you stopping me for. My mother starts crying. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then she said, Julian, be nice to the police. But I'm like, F the police. Mm -hmm. She cried even more. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, Mama, you know, I don't have enough of you on this trip. Mm -hmm. You know, just let me do what I'm doing. She might not have read the Willie Lynch letter, <laughs> but she's feeling the Willie Lynch well, letter. Well, she mm -hmm. is a product of Mississippi. Mm -hmm. and she, she, you know, she has always thought I was a, had a head trick of timber. Mm -hmm. She's like, just calm it down, calm it My mother sobbed to the point that the policeman told me, I'm not going to give you a ticket 
because your mother is crying. And she cried from basically New Orleans to Biloxi. Mm -hmm. About 80, mm -hmm. just kept sobbing. Yeah. You gonna get killed. Um, this is really how assimilation sure. has basically, and my mom is, you know, she's politically active. Yeah. She taught me how to be me, yeah. mm -hmm. more yeah. or less. But Nevertheless, you know, seriously traumatized. Seriously, and I was, my heart was totally broken. I because I just saw her doing that. And I'm like, Bobby, you don't have to play Mr. Bojangles. Because yeah. that's what I saw her doing, is playing Mr. Bojangles. Yeah. And we've had so many of our people who felt like they could not be themselves mm -hmm. because they have been cowed, mm -hmm. brutalized by white supremacy, by the notion of uh, being afraid. And the fear goes back to lynching and the extent to which we have not been able to be ourselves as a people, not be able to produce economically. Mm -hmm. The first lynching that Ida B. Wells documented was a lynching where two black men, three black men, Tommy Moss and some others, right. decided to start a store. Right. And a white man who was basically angry but that they competed with him economically decided that he would go shoot up their store and the three brothers were lynched. Tulsa, we keep going. So basically the accommodationist that so many of us have internalized is a function of history. And Absolutely. so when I saw that scene, I almost got up and was doing like this in a movie, like, yeah, y'all, sure. you know, hey, hey, about time. Um, and I realized that that's not productive. Mm -hmm. um, but it felt good. It, it felt damn good. <laughs> right. We can be entertained, but then we go. But, but, but what I need to say about this is that we have to put this film in context, unpack what's productive about it and what is not productive. And that's where we get the lazy thinking, it's where we get the shorthand, mm -hmm. and it's where, you know, I mean, everyone here has an opinion about the film, mm -hmm. but what I think we have to do is take it, you know, some, like it, some don't is, like it, but the, but the fact is that there are learning moments in there, and there's some things in there that are utterly destructive. Yeah. Dr. Malvo, but it's not just, I mean, I was, I was borrowing the term lazy to make a quick point, but it's not just lazy thinking being black is a traumatic experience. It's an unresolved perpetual trauma. We, some of us get to shop and have good jobs and do some stuff and get our hair done and, and like drive a car, but all that is happening in the context of intergenerational, unresolved, normalized trauma. Yeah. Ironically, when black people go, go to see a film, including this film, they didn't go there to do no work. Mm -mm. They didn't go there to, to, to quote, not be lazy they went there to, to get to escape. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that hurts the black psyche, which is why I said much earlier about the fact that there's so much negativity in media, is that our parents, because they're traumatizing the paralysis, ambitious assimilated paralysis in terms of being constructive to help their child be able to decode and navigate through the society without hating themselves, which is what happens if you have no critical analysis. The irony here is that it's not really lazy, it's really the irony of going to a film to escape hard work because I want to have a good time. I'm eating popcorn. I'm chilling. Now, while they're eating popcorn and chilling, they're watching pathology. Right. And they're watching a child be abusive mm -hmm. to, to his son, calling his mama a hoe, calling black women hoes, and all this negative stuff. Were there, and there's no lesson. I'm talking about a, a lesson that you don't have to go digging for. Now you no, get your if, if you dig and, and yeah. look, you'll find a lesson. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about. Layers. I'm talking yeah. about in your face contextual layer like there was there was a hit I'm almost finished mm -hmm. there was a hidden lesson in the fact that Uncle Earl was acting the way he was because of PTSD yes. that's, that's mm -hmm. him just being a, just a no good pimp and, a, and just a, a just an abusive person Absolutely. was not just left alone like it sometimes is in films so they said he went to war right. blah 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 he wasn't and, always like so him. so right. so that was one of the rare <clears throat> the rare pot potentially contextualizing at lessons in the room in terms of why we do what we do but there weren't that many lessons in there. Like, why were, was, why were there some white saviors yeah. who had them under the bed? Who's the white savior? I, 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 I like your race. Who were the, 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 the people that had them hidden under the bed? I Where were you at? His wife, in fact, he owned And the him. wife actually articulated his uncle, his and uncle I, Right, she was a token, right. she was a token right. hater, to, so the white savior well, see, wouldn't be so blatant. That was the one that I thought would have turned them in, actually. I, that's what I thought. I thought that the white, white... But a black man did it in the context of the same story that had them in it. See, this is not just one scene. This is a whole film. 
But that's what I want you to understand. I mean, this is not just one film. This is no. this is the same film where Uncle Earl did, was beating on folks. This is the same f film where all this other stuff was going on that was negative. Yeah. And then they hit him under the, the white people hit him under the bed to save them, which is a white savior a metaphor. So what is all, Uncle Earl? And you know, under the bed, it, 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 but it was a white people who gave him a favor. Still what, a white savior. But the white savior it's an unconscious. Under the man. bed reminded me of the way that black people escaped in, in slavery. It was the Earl that they wanted to get on an airplane was because of Earl too. Yeah. Even and they die. Okay, time out. And they were, and they were Ray, murdered. I, I, I want to get, I, I want to get Ray's comment on this. On what? On the white savior. Uh huh. Well, see, I thought the white wife was complicit. You mm -hmm. know, and mm -hmm. I think, I and I, I think the writer left it kind of ambiguous mm -hmm. about whether or not she had conspired with the dude mm -hmm. that actually got the money at the end. Because remember at the table, she said something like. Two hundred, uh, was it two hundred fifty thousand dollars? He said for each of you, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I think so. I was, I mean, you could you know, speculation. But how's she gonna know them? Yeah, that is so, she, she, okay. She, so well, no, she, she me, made the statement about the young boy she even shooting the police shot, yeah. shooting the black, the, the policeman in the okay, face. She made the statement I, about Uncle that. Earl does the airplane. So, I, I want to put this on the table. It's uh, I've heard a lot of talk that Slim was emasculated. Yes, but, but he was. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. 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 Slim was emasculated, and and I mean that's a strong thing. I'm going to tell you something. I thought, I thought that Slim got his man and left that movie. Not emasculated. That's right. That was no, that was what I that was what I, I thought. I never thought he was ever emasculated. I think it was a bad date. It was the that balance was off. But it wasn't a it bad was, date. Either. Well, well, it started out as a bad date. They okay. had very little in common. Yes. They were not it equally yoked. They were not going to have very, a second date. They were <laughs> oh, they were not no. going to have their no. second date. And then you know they were forced together. And I don't think I think they both gave each other pushback. That's right. So I don't right. think that there was That's any right. emasculation. That's right. But I want you know Great another point. Jade was talking. We're talking about the violence and the sex yes. juxtaposed. Yes. And all I could think about was Frankie Beverly, Joy and Pain. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just how you know. And the joy piece is that black folks find joy wherever we are. No matter how oppressive the circumstance, can I say we found thing? joy? If we found joy in enslavement, mm -hmm. even though it was an oppressive situation, I just think that that is a hopeful message. Although That's I right. really hated the notion of sex being juxtaposed with violence. Jay, so Jay, 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 Jay. I'm juxtaposing the the sex and the violence. The the sex happened. All right, we're well, watching two people have sex on screen. The violence of the young black male being violent put on the gun. Back and forth. That is white supremacist pornography, racist pornography. They fetishize and love to see other black people How dying. Okay, so as a How creative person, 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 dying on screen, loving to see the image of violent black men. So that feeds their narrative to say that like, oh, they're uncivilized, they're savage. Like we are, you know, more superior to them. And it feeds into this whole complex that they have. So I wanted to leave that there. But we're also talking about um, your other point. Um, where were we? The question on the table was, um, Emasculation. The emasculation, absolutely. Sl Listen, Queen came on the date because she had a bad day at work. The state decided to prosecute her client. She execute. had an attitude. Every time execute, execute her client, right? So she had a bad day. Didn't seem like she was close to her family or anything like that. He was very, very a, a different character, right? Very uh, uh, religious, a Christian, uh, a family man. It was just kind of like a simple, you know, average show, and. He was very, very naive in terms of what we're living in, which is a system of, we're, we're, in, a, we're in a state of warfare, right? In America, under a system of racism and white supremacy, okay? And well, so he, he, was not prepared. he was not prepared because he thought that his, society, his survival strategy, his survival strategy was to go along to get along, and that's how he was that's getting through. And he loved the Lord, let's not leave that out. And he learned a lot more as he went through the film, and but he endured a lot of disrespect and this hyper-aggressive stereotypical image of the defensive black woman, right? So I can't talk about him being and emasculated without bringing that. And he was very, very gentle with her. At, and he, at the beginning, and they, and they, the, even at the dinner. Y'all yeah. are tripping about this whole just position <laughs> thing. And the only reason I had to step in and say y'all are tripping is because you're not Who adding tripping? the creative well, sister, layer. You cannot tell people that they tripping unless you tripping. I am tripping. <laughs> I'm totally tripping. Because you cannot 
not judge our opinions. It's not no saying judgment. stuff about no, no judgment. judgment. Yes, okay. It was just a way for me to jump in and like get you guys' attention. Okay. Well, um, you, okay, well, you, you just lost mine. No, don't <laughs> okay. like that. Yeah. Um, so my the thing about the sex scene, juxtaposed to the violence, is that in a movie, they're trying to keep you at a level of focus, right? So for me, this is the way I saw it. And I'm just bringing in a, yeah. a, a more artistic perspective because I, I, listen, I'm humbled to be sitting amongst all of these doctors. I feel blessed. <laughs> so, um, you, so you tell us we tripping. No, no. <laughs> Dr. Do, tripping. Dr. Auntie, please don't Girl, tell me like this. You I have lost so about much. 20 points in my no, 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 no. Go ahead, go like ahead. Yeah, make um, your point. I feel like because the film had already hit, to a certain extent, a climax, if they had just shown Full us speed. them having sex, it would have, we talk about people coming in to watch Lazy. If, it, if they were just having sex, we would have lost everybody in the movie because they would have been Ooh. engulfed and immersed right. in that component of it. Because no, you we get, wouldn't have. The ex- expectation it's not enough black of people, love to take it for granted. It was we don't sex. See that it that was much. carnal. They we, were we actually the F U C K I N G word. That was like some of the most intense sex it's in a black movie right after dark. That, I, that, I've <laughs> never, that I've ever seen. Did, so if they it. didn't show the other dynamic, I feel like it would have plateaued and everybody in the movie would have been lost. Not the focus would have been lost. So not us. No. Not us. We don't, no. we don't see no, black people don't see enough love stories between us to get lost. No, I we would have been, we would have been staring because we don't see it. People are shallow. People are shallow. The reality is that when we, we talked about Ashada Shakur in this, in, in, during this discussion. Ashada Shakur, her child was conceived in a holding cell while they was fighting for their lives. In a freaking prison, they got it on. They said, "Look, baby, this yeah, is my job. Only let's chance." Fuck and out. most and people they, see this they, film, they, they, they gonna let know me that. Let get some of this energy that, out. That came to my mind. You know that, that, but most people don't even know. Like when she that said that joy and pain, well, I think it's again, it's a joy and pain thing. I yeah. think that we find, you know, it's like we wherever we are as black people. We find some occasions of joy. But this was not they a love story, flawed, y'all. No, this was, a, this was Love this Jones was a love, love story. Without the happy ending. This was, right. No, this was Love Jones with all kinds of trauma pathology. But this was not a love story. This not was, a love story. No, it wasn't. It was This was the greatest story. I see the the, the, the I see the. I thought it was love among pathology. I, I thought it was love. Not a beautiful love story, no, no, no. but it was this a love story. This was a survival story. story that ended where they didn't survive. But this was a survival story. But ain't story. that happening to us in real life? This movie is fiction. Mm. You know, Absolutely. This movie yes, is fiction. We all agree on that. And I'm going to say again that when people come watch these films, though it's fiction, they get emotionally involved. And what the film laid out for us to get emotionally involved in was problematic was full of pathology and anti-blackness. I saw I saw the beautiful um, oh, cinematography. Uh, the, the soundtrack was the bomb, as, as, as the folks yeah. say. I yeah. love the soundtrack, Roy yeah. Ayers, et cetera. The, 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 the blue. The, the, all of it was wonderful. Oh, man. But it was, and, I and, and, and even, the, even the Jerry Curl, the fat Luther Vandross Jerry Curl <laughs> story. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, I had never heard that in a movie before. Right, right, so right. I was like, no, they didn't talk about a blue. Big, but Luther, Luther, Luther. Big Luther. Big Luther. 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 Yeah. That, that, that was hilarious. But that was part of what made me say but, it was a, movie. but it's a black ass movie, but it's a black ass movie that is that is not consistent in terms Steve of Google one theme is all over the place. Yeah. And, and but but, but but we get caught up in it because there's things that, that I think a lot of us kind of already said that we relate to. Mm-hmm. There's moments of it that go that, that fits our own life script, but as a as a whole piece, I'm telling you, it's problematic look, look, to, to the black there was, uh, there was a moment I want to share this that I'm looking at this extraordinarily Nubian queen. Beautiful. Lying on the tarmac. Yeah. Mm. Blood everywhere. Trauma. Lying there for a good period of time. Like Michael Brown. Mm. Michael Brown That's is right. exactly right. what right. I thought about. And it, I mean, it was piercing pain. Art reflects well, the it terms. Was so piercing pain. Let me ask pain. everybody a question, though. Y'all because everybody has that position. Me. Would you have rather had this movie or not had this movie? I'd rather have this movie. Me too. I right. needed the movie. This is the best film it, of the year. It, to me too. If I had mm-hmm. a clip. No, I would give. rather not have the movie. I think the movie should have called Queen Slim and Trauma. They forgot. Think, they forgot the third character. Oh God. I hope these, sisters, these sisters work together continuously. They, I, that, this is this is they off to a great. I think work. they will continue to work together because I listen to Sonic. They, 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 they will because it's a white accommodation. Are going to continue to work together? Mm, I like the fact that this movie is having us have these deep conversations because mm-hmm. we have to yeah. investigate and interrogate. This is rock. How cool. where we are right now within our lives and how these nuances are affecting us, 
right, given the climate that we live in, which I have to keep going back to the fact that we are at war, we're living under a system of racism and white supremacy. We cannot ignore that. I like the film because we can use what Dr. Neely Fuller um, has written about and, you know, about how white supremacy. If you don't shows understand white supremacy, you don't understand all of these different aspects about. within our lives, within society, and how it controls that. And so I appreciate the film for that reason. I know that there needs to be some sort of study guides or programming, hopefully, especially for mm -hmm. our youth as they go through, because, you know, I'm an educator. As they go through and 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 That'd analyze the sort that have these sorts of, of dialogue, be because I would hate to have them think that some of the things that they saw in the film was actually appropriate or things that you should kind of be doing. Example, case in point. Uh, shout out to Brother Riza Islam from the Nation of Islam. He made a great point that you know Slim did not smoke and he did not drink. Period. He didn't. But you know, on the run last days or whatever, he was. He changed his mind in both of those times. We need to make sure that we are constantly on an alert. And that was a manifestation of mental weakness on the part of Slim's character, in my mental opinion. Or freedom. In my, in it my was freedom to me. I think that Slim was a kind, he, gentle let, can, let me, God. Please let me yeah. finish this point. Yeah. Because he was in a life or death situation, and in a situation like that, if any brother's going to stand next to me, he needs to be on his P's and Q's. And all, and well, all he was on his PQ. He the shot last, the cop. If he's you know, in the he last few minutes, 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 no. If he's in the last few minutes war. of his life and he wants to have a little henny, I mean, I really don't have a problem. Well, he didn't know it was the last few minutes, though. So. He thought hey, he was going so, to Cuba. So, so Freedom we got. He thought he was leaving. Going to Cuba. We have a we 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 have a clock here that that is our master. I I want to say this. Um Master Clock. <laughs> master Clock. Master Clock. Use a good, use a bad Master Clock. Um, so, during the course of the film, and the moments I had to think afterwards, I just had the biggest cr crush on Queen. Mm -hmm. Oh my Fine. God! I just thought she. Well, in real life, she don't do brother. Oh, hold on, no. hold on, hold on, hold on. Life, no, no, no. I, I'm she making a point here. Man, let me make this What'd point. You say that? She did you right. So my wife and I oh, talked about it. My, 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 my wife and I talked about it, that, you know, I had a crush on Queen. She said, I'm giving you a pass no. I love me some Slim. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Slim was too goofy for me. Um, okay, <laughs> okay. He was a little soft for me. I, I had never heard of her. I had never heard of the actress. And I Googled her name. And if you do it right now, 40 of the 42 pictures that you'll see is with is with a white her. dude. And a white either, guy. I don't know if it's a boyfriend or husband a or whatever. Fiance mm -hmm. is a fiance. And, and that's part I of the white dude. White yeah. dude. And rock. That's and, 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 and I'm, t I, I'm going to share my feelings She's without putting y'all out. Well, see, that, without putting y'all out there first. That's an issue, too. I was just like, in, in to, to be truthful. I was really see, disappointed. Rock, that's part that's of the so that's, that's part of whether it's 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 intentional or not. That's part of the white accommodationist casting, mm -hmm. because they bring in black people who. How's the white accommodation? I'm getting ready to. I, I I'm I, getting ready to talk. I think I agree with you. I'm getting ready to say it, brother. Mm -hmm. so hold hold on for a second. You gonna get there's all kinds of black people on planet Earth. There's Violet Davis. You know, there's all kinds of people who who actually are not acting like they love somebody black. They actually do love somebody black as part of their, their life. Right. And they get, they, and also there's African Americans who, who have a visceral relationship and a real life relationship to the phenomena that's in that film. Both of those people are from Britain who are, who are in that film. Yeah, they're not. And black people, even when we don't articulate what's affecting us, like you just got finished articulating and you just said, I'm, I'm admitting because you realize it's not something that people normally talk about mm -hmm. as part of the co casual conversation. Sure. That when black people see the rare event of a black movie, because it's still a rare event, even though it's two, 2019, we, mm -hmm. we run to it because it's so rare. Mm -hmm. And we find it, oh, oh man, this beautiful sister is running around with Biff. <laughs> Julianne called him Brad. This, and this, yeah. this, 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 this beautiful yeah. brother's running around with Biff. Kind of. Becky. So, Becky, and, and, and that's Becky relevant. Ray. Everything that's in the, in the landscape that we're looking at and experiences is relevant to our worldview and how we react and, and how we're going to respond to the trauma that we're already in, whether we get relief from it or it's becoming further developed as part of how we, how we experience life. It's not good, from my perspective, from a behavioral science perspective, to have a sister starring in a film like this acting like she's loving a brother who in real life don't do it. 
That has a negative okay. impact on the black I, I, I psyche. With it. I roll with that. It's I just true. It. I'm not, that, that I'm not even trying to tell you to roll with nothing. I'm telling you, yeah, I'm no. telling you what he just confessed, and it came from the context of a confession, like I said before, because we don't usually talk about it, but we're thinking yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And I heard people say it and think it. And I heard I heard some brothers say, God, she's so beautiful and she won't give me the time of day. Oh, I mean, that that speaks to how people feel about Major League Baseball Athletes. players, NFL, exactly. NBA, NBA uh, uh, Sidney Poitier, all yes. and and all that, and that all, young. And, there was a young brother. Rest. There was a young brother. I forgot his name now. Was a young brother in, in in Sacramento who was murdered by the cops. Oh yeah. Um, who had written a a Instagram post saying that, that black women give you black days and yeah, and, yeah. and said all this anti black yeah. female stuff. And there was sisters saying, "Well, he should have died." Which was crazy because yeah. the cops didn't know about all of that. Yeah. They just knew they was a black man to yeah. kill. Yeah. But, but, but the, the point, I mean, he we, should we not have died, and the whole thing was ugly. But the fact is that there are people who will pimp their blackness, That's right. expect black support, mm-hmm. talking black and sleeping white. That's right. uh, as uh, right. Haki Matabudi said in a film, in a poem some years ago, I really don't care who you sleep with as long as you ain't sleeping with me. But I'm I mean, talking about you whatever you do it. I'm but, talking about the larger connotation of, yeah. of, of but, white so, accommodation. We do a lot of so, white accommodation. But I think we struggle to accept that there is truth in all things. And I think the I, the concept of us needing all of these ultra pure like moments in everything no. is, is, yeah. is well, radical. Not, in I, I need a lesson. Hey, I need a lesson, not pure. It's relevant from hey guys, the perspective the massa, of whether you're able Massa, 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 massa clock. Massa, massa, massa clock. Said uh, a white, uh, a massive white, clock a white on the clock. wall. Say that's all, y'all. <laughs> so so uh, we're gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna be calling on you all for other subject matters. Trust and believe. I'm going to do that. Those of you who are watching, I hope that you appreciate and enjoy this show. Have all of your friends to subscribe to the Rock Newman YouTube channel. Thank to all of my guests. Thank you so much. Thank and God bless you for inviting me. All right, between this conversation. That was fun. Absolutely. That was fun. Great. Oh, man. Oh, Black Hey, I'm oh, sorry. God. Please forgive me. Yes, uh, it's my first time on the Rock Newman show. My heroes are alive. <laughs> they at the table. Like, I don't really? you know. I'm honored. Listen. I'm honored. Wow. Thank I've been, you know, behind the scenes, but uh, on the show. Really? Yeah. Okay. You know what? Maybe if someone had to ask me, I would have said yeah. Two or three times. Did this just come out? What's the best place to line up? Eh? Is it here or it's on Amazon? Door or something? Yeah. Or? Black Classics Press. Well, I got to get it. Oh, get a group oh, shot. Oh, I got to get it. Too. How about this? How about y'all stay where you are? How about y'all stay where you are? And, and then come on, oh, come on this side.